I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a Kaiser first rotation. Uh, sorry, not first pick, but in the first half of the draft for the side of Schalke. Okay, we'll see if it's available and picked up. And of course, Upset versus Attila is always a match worth watching. It's definitely one that's been happening since both players and uh, respective teams qualified into the top tier from Challenger. But my eye is also going to be on Mowgli versus Trick. Two very different styles of junglers and what sort of impact they can have in the game. Draven, Corky, Karma, followed by Yumi, Zaya, and one last ban for Vitality. So the Sejuani is what I would expect to be banned away. Uh, thinking about other potential bans, they could consider banning the Kaisa if they want to limit the AD carry pool even more. They could look for a potential uh, Rakan ban as well. But note they are just going to stick with the typical Sejuani that we often see thrown towards Schalke, which does suggest that they could look to prioritize the Rakan if they wanted to. Um, but they've got quite a few options under their belt, given that a lot of the big power mid laner picks are still up and available. All right, Akali has been locked in. Abadagi has played the champion four times, three wins and one loss under his belt. We know, as you mentioned, that Rakan is up as well. Ignore one game played, he went unkilled actually. 1 0 14 on that pick. We'll figure out whether it goes through, but Kaiser was one of the champions you were mentioning a couple of moments ago. We'll see if uh, Vitality or Schalke want to lock it in phase one. Well, Silas is available, and I feel like it's something that Vitality love to grab if it is up. Uh, they probably want to try and get that into the Akali matchup as well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it put into the hands of Jizuke. Thinking about potential junglers, if Vitality wanted to, they could go for something early in the form of a Gragas, maybe even a Lee Sin, something that we often do see come out from the side of Mowgli. I want to give them a little bit of early game skirmishing and power. The only thing they have to be aware of is the potential for Trick to answer with something like the Elise, which is something that he often does like to play uh, to match up against his early jungles. Ding on the money for the Lee Sin pick. Then Trick can pivot. If he goes for the Elise, two games played on stage, one win and one loss. And reminder, of course, that Shelka are locked into the playoffs. They've got that fourth seed, which means they are not available for selection by Splice. Uh, we'll like to take the third. And there's the Kaiser Hover. We're potentially locked in here four upset and denying that pick from Attila. So we talked a little bit about it earlier. It's a very safe uh, bot laner. The upset is more than happy to play. Also, Schalke usually don't like to invest a huge amount of resources into the bot side of the map, which is what makes Kaiser very good. Now, if they wanted to go extra defensive, they could lock a Braum in right now. But if they wanted a little bit of engage, they could save their support pick to the second half and instead just lock in something like an Olaf or an Elise for a bit of early game power to better enable the mid jungle duo. And it's going to be the Kiana locked okay. in here to complement the Akali. Obviously, Flex. I kind of wonder if that's going to go in the jungle for Trick. Well, what's important to remember is that for Schalke, this game doesn't mean a huge amount. So they could be considering options in terms of flexibility. They could look to put the key on the top and see if they can run this double assassin style. Or they could just go for the mid-jungle powerhouse of Akali and Kiana and give it to Trick. I think it's a couple of options, and it's not really a style that we often see from Schalke. So in the final game of the split, they could just be experimenting with uh, different styles coming into play. Do you have a preference on what you think these players could pull off? Because I kind of like the idea of the mid-jungle duo. I agree. Um, but obviously, we know that Odo could play when I look down the champion list. He's definitely got a plethora of champions under his belt. And it would be a surprise to me if it landed in Odo's hands. Yeah, I would be a little surprised, but he often talks about how he get, rarely gets the opportunity to play these fun champions, so maybe Schalke are doing him a favor. We'll have to wait and see as we move into the second half of the draft, but notice how the Alistair was picked up for the side of Vitality as a means of denying that away from Ignar. We already talked earlier on about how he had a pop-off performance on it yesterday, and by Vitality locking it in, they can now limit the support pool and guarantee themselves a stronger matchup in the 2v2 towards the bot side of the map. Let's talk about that AD carry for it because with Lucian off the table, Draven off the table, Zaya, Kaisa already picked yesterday. He ran the Caitlyn. It was in conjunction with the Morgana. But we know the likes of Siva is up and available. Ashen Varus is something I've been hearing talked a lot about on this patch over the time. So, you know, what direction do you think he goes, assuming it's that bot lane that's going to get locked in right now? Well, because it's Attila, he might do Vayne. Um, I'm not gonna promise anything, but Vayne can work. You could also look into a potential Jinx. You do have an early range advantage and you can look to threaten, and it's something that Attila has brought out in the past. Uh, as you rightly said, a lot of AD carries are very limited right now, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Attila bring out something unique, but again, he doesn't have to lock it in right now. Okay, so let's see if he does. Save that counter pick option for Cabo. Yamato Cannon on screen right now. Wants to look uh, for the win, and of course, 
overlooked Sick. the most common yeah. AD, the most That's just not what I expect to tell no. to go for, you know, especially, especially when he's going up against the likes of Upset. Um, but in any case, they will be playing more of a safer 2v2 in the bot lane. Uh, Ezreal can throw out a lot of harass during the laning phase as well. So it makes sense as a duo, and it is going to be very safe, as we mentioned. And as you mentioned much, much earlier in the draft there, Vedius, the Rakan, a pick that was under consideration, could have been potentially banned, could have been denied. Instead, Ignal will still get it in his hands. So uh, Rakan plus Kaisa, and if this Rumble gets locked in, then at least that means our instincts for how Schalke would be playing the game lands. We anticipate Kian in the jungle, Akali mid, and Oduwame will get his hands on Rumble. So Schalke have drafted themselves a very early to mid game style of comp. Uh, Rumble spikes very hard at two items. Kiana, we know that once she gets level six, very effective. The same for the Assassin in the mid lane for Akali. So I feel like Schalke is gonna be looking to group up and fight. It's something that they often do. It is a go, a tried and true strategy that I like to uh, utilize. Normally, they have a little bit more crowd control in their kit, which often comes from the likes of Trick uh, and Oduamne. However, now they're running more of a carry threat. They have multiple sources of damage from all of their primary carries, and you've got Trick on the Kiana as well. So this is definitely a high risk, high reward gameplay style, because if you fall behind too much, I'm looking at the scaling on the side of Vitality, and I feel that it's quite prevalent. Now, that's not to say that a is going to necessarily fall off in the late game, but you look at their ability to engage on the likes of an Ezreal, and it is very hard to lock that guy down unless you have both the Akali and Kiana finding successful flank, uh, flanks. So I feel like Schalke need to focus on getting an early lead, getting control over the side lanes, and forcing skirmishes into team fights after finding pit. Well, if there was a team that could pull it off, I think Trick and this Schalke squad can. We've seen it a few times in the past as the coaches shake hands and jumping into Schalke, taking on Vitality. Well, let's take a look how they handle themselves. As you mentioned, for Vitality, a win here will secure themselves fifth place. We know Rogue already in the playoffs and a loss for Vitality means they'll play one more game. A tiebreaker with S. K. So all the pressure is on Vitality to step up and seal the deal for playoffs. Will Vitality do it right here, right now? Let's find out. Welcome back to the third to last regularly scheduled game of the summer split here in the LEC. We'll take a look down the list to figure out what's going to be happening because Vidi says you rightly pointed out um, in terms of expectations, decision making, a bit more pressure on the side of Schalke to get themselves ahead, get a lead with the comp that they have. So I, it's... Um it's quite cool what Schalke have in terms of their comp. I personally love seeing Akali Kiana as a duo. We've seen it multiple times for a bunch of different teams in Europe, being flexed in both jungle, top, mid. Uh, the amount of variation you have with this duo in particular is really strong. And what's great about it is because one is AD and one is AP, you can't just itemize to handle one of them. If you try and mitigate the Akali damage, you're gonna get one shot by the AD damage coming out from the Kiana and vice versa. So what is great about both these assassins as well is while they excel in terms of skirmishing and side lane threat, they're also very strong in team fights. And because you have the Rakan engage combined with the Rumble ultimate, they each have a lot of options when fighting around objectives specifically. But if they're not fighting around objectives, then they wanna be looking for picks and looking for skirmishes. Um, but when things like the Dragon and Baron spawn, Schalke should not be afraid to contest Vitality because in these narrow choke points, Kiana can make up for a lack of utility that is provided from the rest of the Schalke composition. Yeah, really, really impressive. And one of the things that's going to be interesting is the play style of Vitality kind of leans into that, doesn't it? Vitality quite like the skirmishes. Vitality like to get in your face. Um, yesterday, we saw Mowgli having a very, you know, proactive early game. Uh, very heavy counter jungle style of jungler. I do have a little bit of stats to contrast Trick and Mowgli, and Vedius, I want to ask some expectations on how these individual players not only match up one against another, but when you look down at kills plus assists, Trick significantly outperforming, 3.5 on average, counter jungle percentage significantly lower, however. So there's that difference there. So 
As you rightly said, one of the biggest differences is Moku likes to use his pressure in order to invade in the enemy jungle and steal away camps, whereas Trick likes to spend a huge amount of time ganking towards his laners, in particular the mid lane. He often plays around mid. More recently, he's been playing a little bit more around the bot side of the map. But in this game, I feel like that he wants to be trying to enable this Akali as much as possible. Whereas for Mowgli, I think it's way more important for him to try and get Kabushad ahead. Notably because Oduamne on this Rumble has a really big mid-game spike. And if you can delay that, then it's really potent. But Trick is trying to already get him ahead in the top side. Well, early gank already. Very good hop there from Cabo. Managing to use the mini knock flawlessly. Here comes Mowgli, gets the resonating strike rather, chases forward. There's no further follow-up as you have a tiny little stutter. And at the end of the day, Vitality come over with a little more HP. Quite an interesting path that Trick took there, going from his raid into his raptors, into then only securing a few of his wolves, um, and then actually going up towards blue, uh, and then securing the invade. So he does actually get the level three, and he's actually in a position to kill Cabo Shard, but he doesn't quite land the combo, which means the crowd control doesn't follow through, uh, and neither team ends up with an early kill. Meanwhile, we see Abadage being threatened in the mid lane against Jazuke. Yeah, huge chunk of damage from Jazuke, managing to land that CC and follow-up combo. There is some threat here from Mowgli behind, but a little too low level, especially if there's minion waves to play with, and Trick maybe sniffing this one out. Trick's gonna be in range if any trouble breaks out. Trick's actually gonna come in right behind Jazuke. Jazuke's in trouble. He needs to get a little bit more damage down. Flash forward, Abadagi follows up. First blood to Trick and Shalka. Oh. Well, actually, Vitality secure first blood down the bot lane, oh, Quickshot. Oh, I completely missed that one. Jack Troll and Attila find themselves a two versus two kill against the likes of Upset. Definitely was not expecting that to happen. We'll get a replay and see exactly what happened there, but... Did that happen exactly the same time? Yeah. I literally was so literally focused. Literally the same time. So, Mowgli now path towards bot. He may have called out Trick, but... Shalka do have priority in the lane right now. Oh, take a look at that. The headbutt comes down. Jack Troll is burning to death. Ignar actually gets the kill secure. The trick was in time. So Vitality, they get, did get first blood. But we catch a replay of that while that was going on. Pretty good gank from Trick in the mid lane. Yeah, and this is something... Ooh, we'll talk a little bit about that because now we do have the replay. So let's have a look at what happens bot. So... Oh. It's pretty... Oh! oh fail flat. Oh, you hate to see it. And frankly... Upset shouldn't have been caught there. No, I mean, that was terrible from Upset. He was he was sitting in the middle of a wave, uh, and he thought he was safe because he had the wave, but his support wasn't there. He was pushing in, uh, he was getting vision in the river, so he ends up getting properly punished by the likes of Jack Troll, but then Jack Troll throws it away by overstaying in bot, gets knocked up by Ignar, and then with the support there, funnily enough, Schalke end up winning the two versus two. Okay, so as far as the kills are secured, uh, Trick and Ignar on the side of Schalke, they are the ones that were the beneficiaries. Only Jack Troll on the side of Vitality, and now Trick Steps through a little bit of vision, so Vitality are aware of it. Jazuke's already left the lane. Jack Troll trying to be a little cheeky, I think, but I don't think he'll find any targets just yet. But a lot of action already in this bottom half of the map. Well, we expected action to happen. I'm glad that we got to see that trick gank mid and actually pay off like, against the likes of Jizuke. We talked about how important this is, especially in this matchup where you'll notice Abadage is running the Electrocute. Something that Caps did at MSI was shift away from Electrocute into going for the Conqueror to make this more sustained matchup more viable for the Akali. But, but if you stick with the Electrocute, in terms of the 1v1, you're actually weaker. So in terms of the early skirmishing, we saw how Jizuke got push, had control over the lane, and if jungle assistance didn't come, that matchup was only going to get worse and worse. But now Abadage has the level advantage He's been able to go back to base, and he should be in a much more comfortable position as we see a gank up towards top side. And look, it's another gank again. You wanted to see Skirmish Heavy from Shalk, and it's working out. Cabo, though, manages to get the Mega Nor off. Oh, to one minute below 100 HP. He manages to get the shield from the W and turns around. Trick is still arranged to help out, and just a summon a spell blown. But Cabo, perfect timing on that Nor bar to save his own life. So I never really understand how Mopi is always around top side whenever he gets ganked. Uh, the one thing you can say about Mowgli with confidence is that he loves to play around Kabashad. A lot of his time is spent enabling the top laner, uh, trying to get him ahead. And in this situation, it felt like the, the jungler shouldn't have been there. Yet, lo and behold, he's there to help support as we see more fighting bot lane. There is indeed. Good damage onto Shalka's bot lane as Jackshot continues to push all the way forward. Looks like the Hex Flash plus Ignite was used. So, damage onto Upset and Ignore is forced backwards. Upset hasn't really been able to back in a little bit. He's under some pressure as Abadag is still being shoved in and pushed in. The sustain from that Silas is doing work. Here comes Mowgli. If Abadag takes a skill shot to the face, he could go down. 
Well, he doesn't have the ultimate just yet, though. You can see in these trades, however, Dark is often falling short. Um, and this is giving Jizuke constant priority in this lane, allowing Mowgli to get control over the river. He has control over top side, and after finding that fight in bot, they've naturally been able to gain control over the dragon as well. Trick hasn't had an opportunity to base just yet. He's low on health, but he has just hit level six. Shalka, they don't have teleport on top, but they're looking to collapse anyway. Okay, Trick is coming up. Supreme display of talent is available to him. Mid lane movement from Jizuke first. And Shalka, I think safely, say not worth the risk, yep. back out. So they can see the dragon despite having full vision. It's an even gold game. It's a dragon to vitality, but the kill advantage to Shalka. Whoa, that was the flash engage. Jaxtrol just able to escape as Attila used the E. Now Wabadagi, he's in trouble. Perfect execution from Jazuke. He pulls the trigger, does not have the damage, and takes a tower shot for his trouble. Jazuke unfortunately missed the ultimate there from Wabadagi, but here's Odawane. Oh, not going to be enough just yet. Jazuke is able to escape. So, clutch stuff there coming up from Jizuke. This guy always plays on the edge in uh, the mid lane. He's always over pushing, and very rarely does he have the jungle support to allow that kind of play style, which is why we often see a lot of jungle attention trying to shut him down. But props to Jizuke, he's been able to avoid a decent amount of the pressure outside of that very first gank. And he has been able to reclaim a bit of a CS advantage in mid lane. He knows that he has the advantage in this one versus one, and he's doing what he can to leverage that as much as possible. All right, and as we got the first few backs, you touched on a second ago, various uh, similar players making way. So Hextech Revolver, as well as that Vamp Scepter for Abadaga in the mid lane. Uh, BF Sword and Kush Shard for upset down bottom tier. And Sheen for Attila as Jack Troll just coming in after backing away. Got those Moby Boots himself. And it feels like Trick and Jack Troll just keep walking past one another in this river. It's happened several times over the last few minutes. And now all of a sudden, Ignar's just going to try zone Attila away. Very good W, managed to get the knockup. That's in trouble! Attila escapes a few seconds longer. One more auto is all that's needed, but Shalka cannot close the gap. The flash on the arcane shift gets him to safety. I like the collapse coming out from Shalka. They knew that Jackdraw had to take the long path around to bot lane in order to support his AD carry. So there was a big amount of time that could be used to try and find that kill. Unfortunately, Attila is too mobile. Shalka did not have the resources, nor really the crowd control, in order to secure that kill. So while they do burn summoner spells, they do not walk away with extra gold in their back pocket. Yeah, while all that's going on, by the way, Attila's down 22 CS. The tower is under a little bit of pressure, but not much more was gained. Mowgli just steals away the blue buff in that top half of the map. And you can see that Cabo shot is still shoving the way forward into Oduwamne. So Vitality after 10 minutes, bang on even. Gotta be fairly happy despite Trick's sure. repeated attempts to get his squad ahead. Yeah, I, and Trick has been ganking pretty much all over the map a lot. We've seen three ganks mid, two ganks top, three ganks bot. This guy has been very active in the early game, and so far he's only been able to find one kill. But as you highlighted, the bot discrepancy is starting to build. As a stun lands onto ABBA. Oh, almost enough for the kill here from Jazuke. He needs to get a couple more skill shots. Mowgli's okay. coming up as well. There was a team to tower dive. There's no minions, though, so the risk goes up significantly. But the one thing you did mention in draft, though, Vedius, was that a lot of the champions on Shalka's side, one and two items, they really come online, really happy. So this kind of speed of gameplay can accelerate from the Shalka squad once they pick up some of those big ticket items. I mean, this is the thing though, they really wanted to get ahead early so that they can look to force these skirmishes. The fact that they don't have the uh, early game advantage is not detrimental, but you look at the scaling aspect of Vitality with how strong Ezreal is to deal with and how uh, limited options Shalka have to actually lock the Ez down. I feel like the longer the game goes, the easier it is for Vitality to play. But here comes a flanking TP. All right, Oduwamne as well as Abadage. They've got one and now Jack Troll is gonna get cut down. Double kill for Abba. That's just coordination from Shalka. And just as we say it, Shalka find the early kills that they've been looking for. It's not off the back of Trick, it is just off the back of some great usage of the teleport. How critical are you of Attila and Jaxal being under the tower there? It's just a lack of awareness of what summoner spells are available. They know that they have TP available on their AD carry, their mid laner, and their top laner. You can make an educated guess that the enemy team is in a similar position if, the, if your own team is tracking what the enemy is doing. They should have been aware, they should have known, they get collapsed on, 
uh, and they don't respect the potential for a ward behind. And this gives Shalker a thousand gold advantage. While there's a skirmish by the Rift Herald, Jazuke, he's picking a fight with Abadage. Upset and Jackal are making their way in. Killer Instinct is available if Upset wants it. He's going to chase on a Jazuke. Jazuke needs one more auto before he goes down. Upset dashes forward. He can't find the auto. Now Jackal turns his attention to Upset. His trick forces Mowgli outside the pit. Odo is overheating and he will be on, not be able to catch Capo. But importantly, Trick got the Herald. So, Shalka end up walking away with an objective advantage while Vitality find themselves another kill in the mid lane. The arrival of Jack Troll really turned around that fight because if he hadn't arrived, Upset could have been the deciding factor in allowing Shalka to walk away with a kill and the objective. Shizuke doesn't quite get over the wall with his E, so he will not lock up Upset, but it is giving Attila free time to hit onto these plates on the bot side of the map. This game is very chaotic in where a lot of the action is happening right now, but it feels like both teams are going blow for blow. And I kind of, it's what I expected when you started explaining the compositions in draft. Um, this is not Shalka was looking to do, and this is Vitality's play style. But look, here's a replay of how this fight started. But look at the minimap. You can see Jack Troll and Upset making their way. So notice how Jizuke is fighting, even though he doesn't have jungle support, nor does he really know where the enemy bot laner is. So the Rakan could be roaming up, and this is one of the one of the risks that Jizuke does have in this kind of play style. Fortunately, he knows that Jack Troll is on his way. He has Ignite and the damage in order to support his mid laner. So he's able to walk away with the kill. Nice pickup. But because he goes to that fight, he's not supporting his jungler which means Mowgli can't secure the Rift Herald, and Shalka still walk away with an, an ultimately, huh, ultimately big objective. And that's something we've seen all split long. Mowgli and Jazuke, they, they seem to be reading different playbooks in the same game. Um, and this time around, it doesn't help them out. But take a look at the items, by the way. Black Cleaver, Proto Belt, Iceborne Gauntlet on the side of Vitality. Now the list, it's the Warrior Enchant for Trick Gunblade, as well as... Uh, the, oh, I forgot the name right now. For upset. Uh, that's the Storm Razor. Thank you, friend. Storm Razors. Yeah, no worries. Storm uh, Razors Edge. Absolute brain dead. Nevertheless, <laughs> Attila's going to TP down to bot lane. And oh, once again, collapse. Attila's in trouble, but he just TP'd down. Ignar's going to look for the engage. There is a flash available. Attila's going to hold on to it. It's a very easy kill and should lead towards a lot of damage on this tower as so well. So this is just... Um, just a classic lack of awareness. Like, you only have to look at the minimap and go, wait. We have no wards in the river. Where is the rest of my team? They're in mid lane. There is a risk that the enemy team is in the river. And he doesn't back off and he ends up dying for it. Shalka do find a good pick. However, they do lose the mid tower. This gives Vitality a lot of access into the enemy jungle. And if you'll notice, they're actually making their way up towards the top side of the map right now. Oduwamne does not have the stopwatch, but he does very quickly clear out the wave so he avoids any potential dive, and Shalko using this opportunity to get Rift Herald damage onto mid, and they may be able to trade for this tower as well. Now let's see how much Vitality can stop. There's two or three members making their way down. Suzuki cannot find the CC to follow up. There is a Cloud Drake available. Yesterday, Vitality were able to pull ahead against Misfits. They got a fairly strong advantage, but in the mid game, didn't really press that advantage, didn't really find themselves in healthy positions to press and we're seeing that again just getting caught out in odd places conceding deaths at the bottom tower for Attila and Jack Troll. Attila being dove over and over and over but the thing that I find interesting is as we go later into the game Vedius if you turn nameplates off and you just look champion be champion it's not an awful position to be in Vitality have a dragon they've got a tower they're even on gold but they have to execute that comp well. And I that's mean, where I get nervous. Yeah, because what's important is that they take advantage of the range that they have. Um, in terms of a straight up 5v5, if Vitality don't have Meganar, it's going to be really difficult for them to execute. But they do have, uh, like, these comps are kind of, the problem is Vitality's comp is kind of weird, right? When you pair up an Ezreal with something like a Silas, uh, it kind of suggests that Vitality is looking for more of a 1-3-1 style, but on a side lane, I don't know if I give them an advantage against the likes of an Akali. Okay. Uh, maybe the fact that she did run the Electric Q means that she's not going to be able to 1v1 Jizuke, and we've already seen it a few times how Jizuke has constantly had the advantage. Um, so I feel like the Shalka have stronger skirmishing, um, they have a stronger mid game, and it's much easier for them to collapse on sides. Well, Kabashar gets caught up by the charm. It's taken out by a three-man dive of Shalka, and Shalka's proactive gameplay continues to work in their favor, albeit it's a small advantage. 
if we step back and we look at the next few minutes, Schalke seem to be trying to accelerate the pace sure. of the game. Yeah. What else should we be looking for? So uh, right now, Schalke's main objective is to take the outer towers. So after they secure top, it actually becomes pretty easy to secure the mid um, because you can set up flanks from either side of the jungle, given that you can set up pushes on the... Uh, the sides of the map. But Vitality are not being slouches. They've pushed in mid, they're zoning Oduwame uh, from the bot tower as well, and they're setting up to take this. But why are they going for the fight right now? Not rather than sure. just the objective. Well, Equalizer that was stolen from Jazuke gets put down, does not do a lot. Odo's feels a lot stronger as Jack Child's ultimate is starting to wear off. A couple seconds to go before Abba Daga's teleport completes. Abba has recalled and gone back to base. Waiting to see if the channel starts. There's not a lot of deep wards to make use of, but Trick has jumped over the wall. He doesn't have access to his ultimate, so he can't chase further. And Abadage will walk out. Vitality escape with their lives. So notice that Vitality don't get the bot tier one either. So that was supposed to be a trade in that Schalke secure top tower, Vitality secure bot. But they were so focused on getting that kill that they don't actually walk away with an objective. And if there was a single ward that could come in from behind, they would have died. Because Upsa has his TP up, Abadage had his TP up, Oduwame had his TP up as well. So Vitality were just over committing and they were greeting for kills. And it's something that we often see from them that ends up in their downfall. They need to focus more on the objectives rather than just trying to shut down the enemy in terms of the 1v1. And uh, the window of opportunity for Vitality is scary and scary. If Schalke win this game, it's a tiebreaker with Vitality and SK to make it into playoffs. And right now, Splice will actually be watching this game with bated breath because one of their opponents is going to be Vitality, SK, or Rogue. Right now, Ignop, he goes in for the fight. Jackal, no ultimate available. So he loses a bunch of HP. Trick comes in from the side. That's such great use of CC. Here comes Abadage, gets hit, butted away, forced to run. Now the Equalizer will secure the kill. A full five man from Schalke is needed to pick it up. Chizuke, perfect execution, is nicked away. He can't find a target to jump onto, and instead he gets blown up. Trick and upset wreck him as he chases forward. Mowgli's already used the ultimate, but he manages to tag the Q. Will not follow it through. Schalke get themselves two. Shizuke once again breeding for kills in this situation and Schalke, they, the thing is, the difference is, you notice how Schalke secured those kills with very little risk. Abadage still walks away with his flash. He knows how much mobility he has on the Akali. So him diving that tower looked dangerous, but for the most part, he was pretty safe. Uh, in the worst case scenario, he's forced to flash, but like Schalke do everything with restraint. The only reason why they can't take the mid tier one is because it has enough health that they um, are able to defend it as a four man. and. They'd committed, they'd lost a lot of health in their Akali, so they're forced to disengage. So notice here, the main goal for Schalke is to chunk Vitality out so that Trick can set up a flank, and if they get a kill, sieging this tower becomes a lot easier. So now you can see Abadage, he doesn't need to make this dive happen. All he really needs to do is threaten. Um, but because they get vision on Jack Troll, the Rumble Ultimate comes through and they find a kill. Now they want to set it for the Siege, but then Jizuke arrives. He flashes over, he commits a Summoner spell, and then he goes in for the hard commit. He thinks he can get the hit onto Abadage, he can't. And then, of course, Schalke lose the minion wave, and in a three versus four with Ignar on that low health, they choose to just disengage from the fight, and they'll just wait for another day and be happy with the gold that they picked up. Schalke remain 1,500 gold up as they're defending their own jungle for now. 30 seconds until the next Ocean Drake, and finally their bottom outer turret will fall. Dustplate of Drakthar was picked up by Trick, and uh, no real major items yet being completed. Attila's got his second, the mana and that's busy stacking up. Wants that mirror mana. The next big potential engage. Feels like that dragon. When you look at Vitality's like line of vision just behind that dragon pit, kind of signals what they're interested yep. in. Uh, so <laughs> here's a little fun thing for you, quick shot. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is you've uh, heard a lot of people talking about freezing right now, uh, and. There was an opportunity there for Jizuke to freeze the top wave. The reason why he chose not to was because of the Drake. If you push in that wave, you force Schalke to catch it, and it's another point of pressure on the map that allows Vitality to better set up for the Drake. So what Abadage does is actually move through the enemy jungle because of how far back Jizuke is and catches the wave before it even reaches the lane, which means that Schalke don't have to deal with that point of pressure, can rotate down, and are better set up to deal with the Drake. Uh, so like, quick thinking there from Abadage to just recognize the wave state and deal with it so that Jizuke is still forced to go top. And even though Vitality had all that vision, they can't actually contest the drink. Well, let's see if Schalke get caught out here because it feels like they're reading the map well, but Ignar is going to dash straight <laughs> through Jack Troll and gets out clean. That was cool. But Vedius, if, if you step back and look at how Schalke have played throughout the course of the game, 
Uh, we'll see if a skirmish breaks out. It, it feels like Schalke have always been on the front foot. Schalke have always been pushing for the tower, looking for the kill, looking for the skirmish, and for the most part, they have been successful. Yeah. It just hasn't generated a significant lead. Uh, yeah, I think a large part of that is because you can see some farm discrepancies building up between Kabacha and Kazuke. They spend a lot of time sitting in a side lane um, and generating resources for themselves. Um, and given that they've been stronger in the 1v1, they've been in a better position right now. They're looking for a fight. They are indeed. Teleport's coming in behind Schalke, but it might be too late. That's already a kill. That's a fantastic equalizer. Mowgli as well as Jusuke are down. But here comes Jackson. He's charmed up. Throws out the ultimate to buy some time. Ignor zoning out Cabochon, who's making on timed out. Now Jackson's down. Attila's going to be the next target. Four members of Schalke starting to peel away. Finally, Ignor goes out as Cabo runs for his life. Upset needs a couple more autos. The plasma's stacked up. Can he chase him with a hypercharge? Not just yet because the boomerang blade slow him in his face. Very close fight between Vitality and Schalke. It was Schalke that initiate that because they felt like they had caught Vitality out of position. Uh, unfortunately for them, they were in a narrow choke point and Jizuke plays it extremely well in order to actually secure himself a kill. The problem is they can't disengage because of the rumble ult that gets dropped across them as they're looking to disengage. So again, notice how on the map, Schalke know that this flank is trying to come through. So they attack one of the flanks. They attack the front facing. Kiana dies instantly though, uh, from the burst from both Mowgli and Jizuke. Um, this gives Schalke the opportunity to then set up the collapse. But then the flank finally comes through from Vitality. Notice how Kabashan doesn't have his ultimate until it takes a little bit too much damage. And while he does find a good pick onto Ignar, Kabashan can't commit to the fight. So this demonstrates how close the fight still can be. If Vitality do find some pretty good flanks onto this grouped up Schalke against this many squishy targets, then it's a great opportunity for them to actually come out on top. And Attila's now completed some items where he's doing some real damage. Uh, so Schalke can't be convinced that they're just gonna win all of these fights. Again, they excel in skirmishes, and then when they're playing around objectives is when they can utilize some of the strengths of their composition. But in a full front to uh, back, team fight, I feel like Vitality should have yet. The thing is, you also talked about fighting in choke points earlier, and look at what Schalke can do in choke points. That equalizer dealt over 10,000 damage, I believe, uh, from Odo. Just doing such a great job, or rather, with the use of it. He's got himself the Leandri, he's got himself the Hourglass, with two quick kills in the jungle. Rage Blade, Phantom Dancer, Storm Razors means Upset is fully online, and this should be a fairly safe Baron. This was a great pick coming out from Schalke. Oh, great stun from oh, Abadage. Look at that, Killer Instinct plus Abadage's perfect executions. Throws out the five point strikes. Suzuki is going to be the next target, and this is just an easy rundown. Triple kill for Abba, 7 1 7 for Schalke, and they are looking to set Vitality up with a tiebreaker game at the end of the day. This was exactly how Schalke wanted to play this comp. Vitality walked into an area of the map that did not belong to them, and Schalke punished them for it. They find those picks, they find those skirmishes, and with a numbers advantage, it is so much easier for them to force these objectives. Beautifully played by Schalke, demonstrating why they comfortably sit in the fourth place spot, and while Vitality will be forced to fight their way through SK in order to lock a spot in playoffs. Let's take a look how that started with this replay brought to you by Alienware. So again, notice how on the mini-map, Vitality do not have control over this area of the map. The river does not belong to them. They have Jizuke down in the bot lane, and even though he has TP, Vitality are not in a position to answer. Schalke initiate the pick, and then Vitality walk in. They, they throw out the queue thinking that they're safe, Abadage dodges out from it, and then he just executes the very squishy Attila, resulting in a triple kill at the very end of the fight. Very well played from Shao. Exceptionally well done. And after seeing all the pressure Abadage was on during the laning phase, Jizuke was in his face over and over and over. The moment the map opened up, it just feels like Shao have been able to do a lot more work. Uh, that gold lead is now 7,000, three, three and a half items across most of the carries on the Schalke side. And now with Baron and Pout Sieges, look at this. One, two, and two. They can just move in between the lanes as and how they feel. Yep. They've got teleports up for Odo and Abadagi, and it's just, this is Schalke's paradise right now. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I looked at this Vitality draft and like I can see some options, but it still felt a little weird to me. It feels like that they had no obvious early game plan that they could look to leverage. Uh, and I don't feel that their scaling was that much stronger than Schalke's, that they could just afford to sack the early game. And uh, really, it feels like the Vitality had very limited options in how they could get ahead in this game. And it just meant that Schalke got to dictate the pace of the vast majority. That they've executed their comp extremely well. It's cool to see um, 
this style of comp from Schalke because it is a little harder to execute. It does rely on you playing that more aggressive style, looking for picks, relying on deep vision. And I feel like Schal uh, Trick and the team overall have actually played very aggressively and moving into playoffs. This is good to see, especially when you want to be able to match up against the likes of Fnatic and uh, G2, who will brawl with you and challenge you in this early to mid game. And this could be one of the matchups in round one because Splice will be able to pick between Vitality or SK or Rogue. And whoever's left will play Shelka. So this could be a preview. Now, of course, Vitality, they are on the verge of losing the game. And if you are a fan of SK Gaming, then you need to tune in at the end of the day where SK and Vitality will play in a do or die match for the sixth and final seed going into playoffs. Now we'll take a look here as Jackshaw gets engaged on. Ignat trying to zone as many people as possible. Jackshaw's ult is buying a lot of time as the Equalizer comes out. Once again, fantastic from Odawamne. The cow is down and so is the blind man. Now Jazuki is the next target. He is blown up by Abadage. Zatella is forced to arc in shift and flash to safety. Yes, Cabo arrives to the party, but it's already over. And Vitality are being kicked off the premises. Abba dives all the way to the steps. Can't quite catch it. Yes, he does. Gets Attila under the fountain. Meganar Kabashar gets popped for the ace. And Schalke, no fear, at 28 minutes, had created a tie-breaker match for the final spot in playoffs. Vitality face SK later today. I mean, what a stomp from the side of Schalke. It felt like that they were the ones constantly dictating the pace of the game. They were the ones being very proactive on the map. And while we saw some we saw Jizuke doing well in terms of the 1v1 matchup, but Schalke mitigated that pressure extremely well. Uh, Trick spent a lot of time supporting him. We saw a lot of roams from Ignar. We even saw roams down from Odoamne to mitigate the advantages that Jizuke tried to build up for himself. And then it was a lot of Schalke setting up vision, constantly finding picks, and the one team fight where Vitality could have potentially come back. The execution is slightly off and Schalke walk away victorious. Yeah. Dylan Falco will be joining us for the post-match of this game, and I think he'd be pretty proud of the team. Yeah. Um, Vedius, I really liked not only your predictions and your expectations setting for the draft, everything you talked about how you wanted to see Schalke play the game came true. I personally was a little nervous. I didn't see the lead being very big. I didn't see as many kills. I was like, sure. ooh, Vitality are in with a shot. But once the map opened up, oh, it couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, I mean, they ended the game in 28 minutes, right? And that yes. just goes to show that uh, the game felt a little longer, but it's weird to think that there were 22 kills for the yeah. side of Schalke in that matchup. And a lot of them didn't come from the early game, it was the mid game. And that's when we said, once those one or two items come in, that's when this composition really comes online. You talked about it, we discussed where it starts to happen, and then Schalke just kept finding pick after pick, small fight after small fight. And notice how we never really had a full on 5v5 team fight. And that was the perfect scenario for Schalke to leverage in this mid game. And I think you have to give a lot of credit to the individuals on Schalke. Their ultimates were on point. I mean, Odo's equalizers. Ignor did such a great job of zoning. His Rakan was always keeping crucial threats away. I recall when Vitality were teeping in behind the uh, uh, mid uh, banana bush. Ignor single-handedly kept Cabo out until yep. the rest of Vitality were dead. So it's just great individual performances, great team performance from Schalke. And we've got a couple of nominations for key up player of the game. Over at LOL Esports is how you vote. Your options are Abadage, Upset, and Ignor. This is a really tough one for me. For sure. Um, both had incredible scorelines. So any of you fans at home that want to vote for KDA players, 9-1-8 uh, <laughs> and eight for Abadage, 6-1-9 and nine for Upset. So he's a little lower than your mid laner. 1-1-15 one, one and 15 for Ignar, the highest KDA of the three, so I'm just I'm just saying, offering a little bit of help for those at home. Unless Maybe show some support, a bit of love. Unless I'm mistaken, isn't mathematically doesn't matter. Um, nevertheless, I'm pretty sure was, I'm right. <laughs> it was it was a very good performance from Schalke, and I think we're gonna hear a little bit more insight on the win. Let's check in with the analyst desk. Yes, thank you so much, Quick Shot. We are indeed joined by, um, I was going to say, Daniel Falco for some reason, thinking of Dracos. Welcome, Dal Falco, Daniel Falco. <laughs> which is already an amazing name for Schalke. No fear. What a run you guys have had as of late. You, of course, locked in playoffs just last week, but you've just been going from strength to strength. How do you look back on your team's performance in the last couple of weeks? Um, I think like our entire last half of the split was pretty strong. Um, I think a couple of the matches we dropped at least from our perspective, were very clearly due to some early game mistakes or really big draft issues. 
But other than that, I think we played quite good and have shown that we're one of like the strong contenders going to playoffs. Yeah, and I think in particular, yeah. Trick and Ignar have just stepped up hugely for me. Actually, Ignar is really smurfing. No, it's Ignar crazy. is <laughs> super smurfing. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, in yesterday's game and today's game, both it was all about just like finding these roams and collapses on side lanes where he and Trick pair up and do this all the time. And it seems like no team is actually giving the respect to them to be able to do this because they keep getting those same kills every time. Yeah, we, we draft and we practice to be a very active team. Um, I think the way teams like G2 are playing right now is like the correct way to play. So I think having players like Trick and Ignar who are really experienced and good at pulling the trigger is quite good for us, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if we take a look at the picks and bans, I know you can't say too much, obviously. You have a lot oh, of games okay. left to play. What would you say the main objective was for the early game with this composition? Um, I think Akali gets push at the first levels, but then Silas generally has kind of pressure in the matchup. Uh, around mid and of, of course mid is really important so I think what we want to do is create a lot of skirmishes early with rumble push with Kiana in the jungle and just kind of, kind of try and outfight them um, you saw we also use our TPs really well in this game there's like the triple TP behind them I thought that was super cool yeah um, so just kind of a lot of fighting I would say we're gonna look at those TPs yeah. later uh, first though we're gonna take a look at this because early oh, on offset oh no. does get pushed around <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they were able to sort of turn this around. Now, of course, we had the, the gank in the mid lane too. Trick likes to give a lot of attention to yeah. Abadage. It's one of the things we've noticed a lot. Uh, uh, I'm sort of curious how that comes about because it seems like sometimes like uh, it works out really well for you guys. Other times Abadage isn't quite able to translate that advantage. I think like there's obviously the Fnatic game we played where it went very poorly, but I think overall it works well for us. I think we just think it is the best way to play the game. I think G2 plays this way. I think that uh, a lot of the top teams play this way and just mid lane is such a central part of the map and we have a really strong mechanical mid laner that uh, we just think is good. Yeah, we, we was of course yeah. a rookie. We've been watching him very closely. What would you say the biggest step forward is that Abadaga has taken this split compared to before? I think it's two things. One, uh, I think everyone says it's like 24-7 that Trick coming in has made Abba play a lot more confident and kind of led him a bit. Um, also, I think I've done a lot better job of putting him in the champions that he's good at and in matchups where he can really excel. Um, and third, it's just experience. Like, the guy just played another split. So uh, often a lot of the young players, their first split can be a bit shaky, but I think he's playing super good now. Yeah, no more Lissandra. I mean, sometimes yeah. but, uh, he gets hey, to play. Maybe, maybe for playoffs. Yeah, yeah. maybe for playoffs <laughs> yeah. he gets to play No, keep him on more. the Akali. We like to see Abadage <laughs> yeah. on the Akali. That's a good match. Yeah, fantastic. He's also going to be a guy to watch as you guys go into playoffs, what he can do with the team. I heard you talking about your TPs beforehand, and this is something that ends they're also noticed in your previous games. We have a couple of replays as well. The fact that you are so good at using your pressure in those side lanes to make the game more favorable for you. Yeah, and specifically, as you already mentioned, it seems like it's always being led by Ignar and Trick. This is specifically uh, starting off around the bottom side of the map because early on with that uh, 2v1 kill on towards upset, the lane started to go a little awry for you guys. And it seemed like the whole of Shalka did a great job of stabilizing and shutting down Attila. Like, I, I think um, often Vitality has the right idea in that they'll be roaming mid to kind of contest it so they can get pressure on the map. But it seems in this game they're doing it often like at the wrong timings and leaving their side lanes or other members on the map kind of exposed. Yeah, and not respecting yeah. the teleport cooldowns being up, of course. Seems like uh, they struggled a bit with controlling vision along the river too, which also let Ignar and Trick make their way on, on those long angles. So it was always like coming all the way behind towers to get Yeah, the actually the triple TP was really cool this game. I was listening to the comms and it was like really planned out quite, quite some time in advance that they were all going to TP behind and it was cool. Um, what do you make about the difference between Chalka and Vitality? I say this because in times before, there's always been a big rivalry and things are actually pretty close and would go either way. Now it seems that Chalka has really become better than the team that Vitality is at this point in time. How big do you think the gap is? And what do you think about Vitality's current form? I think it's quite big, honestly. And I, I, I have Vitality locked, locked in playoffs? No, they used to play a tiebreaker versus SK Gaming for the last spot. I think that one will be quite close. I wouldn't be surprised if SK won, actually. Mm -hmm. What do yeah. you think is their biggest issue right now? Um, oh, it's just all over. They all just play so aggressive. Um, and not really together often, like their plays aren't coordinated. And uh, it, it's really hard to say. Yeah, communication issues yeah. is what we've cited, but it's kind of blanket statement. Yeah. We don't really know. I do want to take a look at the final replays here. Um, there were many team fights by the end, and honestly, it didn't look like you guys were going to lose that game, but this is a particular one in Vitality's jungle. Yeah, this big one that's sort of set up for you guys to secure the Baron a couple minutes after that, but it, it seems like you once you guys took control over certain areas of the map, and even with Silas being isolated bot lane, you had uh, uh, Oduamne roaming up on the Rumble as well. You always had the numbers advantage in these fights. We're always the ones 
one's pulling the trigger. Yeah, we have the uh, also like the Kiana Roma combo. I saw that one in NA last week. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty nasty indeed. Yeah, it was all she wrote for Vitality. Fantastic game from Abadago, who by the way picks up the Kia player of the game with 41% of the votes. Um, I like the, he, listening to him in interviews and stuff. He seems like a really pretty calm guy, but is probably very happy that he gets this high honor from the crowd. Yeah, it's actually whenever he gets player of the game, it's always a big deal because everyone always kind of ribs on him a bit and. Mm -hmm. And he always, uh, now he has something to throw back at them. Yeah, you know? and show yeah, off yeah, to the exactly. rest. I can imagine. Yeah. Final question for you, Dylan. Schalke, for me, has kind of flown under the radar. I don't know if you guys experience that the same way, because, you know, we're obviously always talking about yeah. the G2s and the fanatics of this world, the battle of Splice and then the underdogs. But meanwhile, Schalke is just putting up the results, is now comfortably in playoffs as fourth place. Yeah. How do you feel the playoffs can go for you? Um, I think we can do really well. Uh, I think we're really looking at... Um, and confident that we're good enough to make it to the World Championships, and that's what everyone is playing for. I also think that if you look at the track record of players like Trick and Ignar, and even Upset from last year in a best-of-five scenario, that teams really should be treating us as one of the top teams, yeah. Yeah, I think that core yeah. of the squad is really, really talented, and something that teams are going to have to keep their eyes on is Ignar. You heard it here, smurfing, Definitely top class. Yeah, I can't wait to see what Schalke Null Fear shows us in the playoffs, but that is next week. After the break, we'll look back at Yangos' career before he and G2 Esports face off against XL.